I kind of want to set a timer like here, I'm going to start a stopwatch right now. And I'm going to let the people know when we get to seven minutes to tell you how long that conversation between Major League Baseball and the union was before they go on lockout. Is it even fair to call it a conversation? I don't think so. Like no conversations. It lasts 10 minutes. Isn't that the criteria? Maybe there's no criteria. Anything under 15 minutes could have been an email. Could have been an email. That's the big thing about Zoom stuff. It's like, couldn't this meeting just have been an email? Couldn't that have just been an email? You probably could have wrote it out in seven minutes. Hey, Brian Kelly's departure uh, thing. Did you watch the video of Brian Kelly talking to Notre Dame earlier today? I have been so out of the college football sphere. I'm even getting NFL stuff for tomorrow's football. I'm like, how can we even talk about the NFL right now when baseball is so insane? Yeah, I, I hear you. Listen, I did budget um, about three minutes worth of my time this morning to watch Brian Kelly's farewell address to all the guys he recruited to play at Notre Dame because it was only three minutes. And I needed to know what he said in three minutes to, to like his team that he just fully abandoned. I'm going to start the timer and we're going to dive into free agent frenzy part bajillion and also the very, very, very beginnings of the lockout. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. I'm starting the timer for seven minutes. Fair. Now, okay, let's start by just talking about the big thing that broke right before we hit record on this. Marcus Stroman's going to the Cubs. Does that make any sense to you, Peter? Marcus Stroman to the Cubs doesn't make a lot of sense to me, and I'll tell you why. So if I take you back to the trade deadline, when they gave up Javier Baez, when they gave up Chris Bryant, when they gave up Anthony Rizzo, the players that returned in that deal we heard, and that they were similar to a Kevin Alcantara, Pico Armstrong. These are all young 18-year-olds. So any normal fan would come away from that thinking, all right, it's rebuild time. And that's okay if it's rebuild time. How did they get to the World Series? They rebuilt it through their system. So that's why I thought, okay, the Cubs aren't going to sign any big names. I know Jed Hoyer, their GM, said that they might be involved. But then they go ahead and sign Marcus Stroman. We don't know how much money yet. But I'm I'm confused. I don't understand why they would make this deal. Does it make them better? Absolutely. Did they already get Wade Miley? Maybe they're starting to think, you know what? The Rafael Ortegas of the world, the Schwindels, the Wisdoms, maybe this is a good enough team to compete in the NL Central because there's not that many good teams in the NL Central, especially with the Cardinals losing out on Stroman now. What are the Cardinals going to do? So I'm still just, I'm trying to talk it out because I simply just don't get it. I mean, listen, I think the Cardinals control their own destiny in this division. The Brewers pitching staff is exceptional, but they haven't made any moves on offense. So it's a great pitching staff and one of the worst offenses in baseball. The Cardinals are the most well-rounded. No, I was only going to say about the Brewers too, about that offense. It wasn't good, and then they lost Avisel Garcia. They lost Eduardo Escobar, too. Yeah. So it was already not that good, and it's only getting worse. Yeah, and they don't have a farm. They don't have a farm at all. It's one of the worst farm systems in baseball. So, like, the, the Cardinals are well-rounded, but they're getting older. Yachty and Wainwright coming back to play an important piece. I mean, they are old. <laughs> they're full-blown old, and they were old in 2021. They performed in 2021, but they're old now. The Reds just lost one of their two big boppers in Castellanos, or so we think. Castellanos apparently okay waiting until after the lockout's done. Castellanos, Correa, Chris Bryant seem like the three that are pretty content waiting until this lockout subsides. You get to go again and ramping up for spring training. That's when those three might make a decision here. But the Reds don't have Castellanos. The Pirates still suck, although they're getting somewhat (laughs) exciting. I mean, the Cubs, like that offense was bad. It yeah. didn't suck. And I know it didn't they, suck. Right. Like I think they're banking on a bad offense becoming somewhat okay. And then say Stroman has a good year. Say Kyle Hendricks has a good year. Say Al- Albert Alzali turns a corner. Say Braylon Marquez is good. Like there Wait, are Miley, yeah. some things that could come about for the Cubs. I guess. I mean, I'm sitting, I'm watching you. And if you guys are watching on YouTube, you can see Jack's face right now. But we're both kind of like, we don't believe what we're saying, though, in a way. 
Well, status report here. We just hit the halfway mark of this meeting between Major League Baseball and the, and the Players Union. So we're at three and a half minutes. Um, I'm, I'm saying all that, like everything needs to work out perfectly according to plan for the Cubs to be in a winning window while Stroman is there. I mean, they definitely didn't sign him for eight years. They probably signed him for four four or five, maybe year four, year five of that contract when Stroman is older, like 35 years old, 36 years old. That's when they start their winning window. It like, I'm saying all these things with, you know, like 80% of my being knowing that this was weird. And like, I think ill-advised. The thing is by itself, the Stroman deal is ill-advised, but Maybe the Cubs have been connected to Chris Bryant. Maybe they do actually go get Chris Bryant. Maybe they do make some more moves. Arm tweeted it out. This deal doesn't make sense unless the Cubs add like six more guys. You know what? Maybe they are. Maybe they see something that we don't necessarily see, but I can't see it. So I'm just sitting here confused. You know what? This is so unique because at this stage of free agency, everybody's still supposed to be available. And like nobody's available anymore. It's it's Correa, it's Bryant, it's Castellanos, but Seager's already off the board. Semyon's already off the board. Baez is already off the board. Chris Taylor sounds like he's off the board of the Dodgers. We got to talk about that one right now too. But I mean, there are a lot of people that are off because I think there was some serious... Um, it, it, almost like hesitancy of what's to come. There was, there was almost this sense of paranoia from players, from agents, maybe from teams that things are going to change and structure is going to get out of whack. And they just wanted to do something that they were familiar with. And that was sign under the current CBA. And another player that, um, that you didn't mention that's not off the board yet is a guy like Freddie Freeman. Yeah. And that's the most, one of the most interesting conversations because I feel like And just to even take it off the field for a second, if you're Freddie Freeman, the person, doesn't it kind of feel like your girlfriend of 10 years, your, that you got married to is now talking to other guys like a Matt Olson. How do you feel if you're Freddie Freeman? I'm thinking if I'm Freddie Freeman and I just won a championship with the Braves, I've given them every single ounce of my soul. I'm basically the new Chipper Jones for them. And they're thinking, oh, we're actually having discussions with Matt Olson. We're dragging our feet for six years, 180, which is totally fair for a guy like Freddie Freeman. Yeah. It's the girlfriend thing where I'm thinking to myself, I feel like I'm getting cheated on. I might, you know what, Los Angeles Dodgers? Maybe I will take your call. New York Yankees, maybe I will take your call. Because if that's the team that's not going to be behind me from the get-go, and maybe... Maybe with the lockout, maybe they are just waiting. But I don't understand because six for 180 is so reasonable. I would understand if Freddie was coming out and be like, yeah, I deserve 10 for 300. Yeah. Then it could be like, all right, well, we got to work some things out. But yeah. a totally fair deal like that, I don't understand why they're dragging their feet. I've just in this day, <laughs> Jack, like Monday and Tuesday, I felt confident. I'm like, I understand why these guys are making their deals. The Rangers, not so much. But still, I'm glad that they were doing it. This today, I just felt confused. I think a lot of people felt like they they had to press. Like I think the Cubs just pressed to go get a notable starting pitcher. What? That's the vibe that I just got. And in the Freddie Freeman thing, I do like your analogy there to the girlfriend. It, it feels like going out to dinner with your work friend that turns out to be a six three super hot guy, and it's like ah shit, I can't compete with that. So it better just be dinner with a work friend. Um, but then when your girlfriend goes to dinner with him four or five times, it's like, oh, this became a Thursday ritual. Maybe you say, you know what? Like, maybe I should take Sheila to go get sushi after. Yes. Right. Doesn't it feel like he's getting cheated on? (sighs) Yeah. But like, how do you interpret cheating? You know what I mean? Like, it's just business. It's just work. But I feel like there's certain players within baseball where it's not like that. Yeah. Like it goes beyond business. But here's the thing. Maybe it doesn't. What's up? Maybe for none of them, it never is. But what's up with Kershaw right now? You know what I mean? Like, Kershaw's in a different discussion, though, because it feels like Kershaw might want to go back to the Texas Rangers because he lives there. 
I don't know if that's not the same thing to me because Kershaw's most likely looking for a one, maybe a two year deal at this point. Freddie is still the best first baseman in baseball. Kershaw's not the best pitcher in baseball anymore. If this was prime Kershaw, like 29 year old Kershaw or something, I'd feel a different way. But we saw Kershaw's body kind of break down a little bit. We've seen his stuff deteriorate a little bit. I mean, he's still Clayton Kershaw, and he's still one of the premier pitchers in baseball, but still. By the way, we just ran two minutes long on the meeting between Major League Baseball and the union. So uh, that shows you how little they care about this continuing. They were ready to go for a lockout. I mean, everybody knew that it was already coming. And the duration of that meeting being seven minutes earlier today between Major League Baseball and the players union is asinine. Why meet? Why meet? Why meet? Just start the lockout earlier.